It is. Okay, let's have a class. Uh, sorry for late a little bit. And uh, uh, we're gonna continue to talk about uh, genetics, the so bacterial genetics, and uh, um, we are move on to uh, transcription and also the translation. So we have them down here. Here, so we're going to be finished. Okay. Um, just wait for me a little bit. So, so let's do a very quick uh, refresh. The whole section here we talk about is uh, central uh, dogma. So we talk about uh, DNA uh, replication, and we talk about the DNA going to go to the RNA. This is called transcription, and then RNA going to protein, and this is called translation. And I say this is a blueprint of the whole section. And we finished talking about the DNA replication. And we mentioned about the structure and what it looks like. It's a double helix. It is A complement with T, G complement with C. And it's a semi conservative replication process. One goes for 5 prime, 3 prime. Uh, another one is uh, 3 prime to 5 prime, anti parallel. And the replication is always from 5 prime to 3 prime. And the required enzyme, which is called the DNA polymerase. And uh, <coughs> we forgot to mention the DNA polymerase can do the work is very efficiency. So basically it's 2,000 BP per second base pair synthesized per second. It's very efficiency. And we also mentioned about the topological issue, and we had a topoisomerase can solve the problem, and we also mentioned about the fidelity issue, and we have a couple tools including DNA polymerase 1, uh, DNA polymerase 3 to do the proofreading, and including the methylization. So there is a different uh, method, it could be to uh, make sure it's accuracy. And, uh, so this is what we have for the DNA replication. So today we're going to talk about transcription and translation. So before we talk the detail, we want to talk something. What's the difference between that? Okay, what is the difference between transcription and translation? So transcription, it is still letters to letters. And we will mention it's from the DNA information go to the RNA information, it's still letters to letters. But the translation is different. This is the letters is to amino acids sequence. So that is called the translation. This is like I speak Chinese, you speak English, and then when I speak it, you transfer them into English. That is called the translation. So there's a some slight, there's some difference between that. So I want to mention that. Okay. So let's talk about these one by one. Um, let's go to the section here is um, transcription. So uh, when we talk about the transcription, only transcription. Uh, we, we need to first of all talk about the RNA. Okay, so what is the difference between RNA and DNA? We talk about the DNA, so we're just going to talk about the RNA today. What's the difference? The structure of them are basically very similar, but there is a one big difference. So this is the DNA, a base, H, 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 OH, 
So you have H, CH2, then this side you have uh, O, phosphate, a phosphate. Okay. So I have an iron A. What's an iron A looks like? The iron A very similar. I have a base, H, O, H, H, O, H, H, CH2, and you go here, you have O, phosphate. So what's the difference? Same thing. Base, phosphate, that's two prime, that's two prime. So here for DNA, in two prime, I have deoxy ribose. I lose one oxygen. Buying A, I add to the back. So this is two prime oxy ribose. And then some people think you're smart, so we just say two prime ribose. So that's ribose. DNA is deoxy ribose. That's the first difference. Difference. Okay, that's number one. Second difference. We talk about the base right here. Okay, there's a gene base. Majority of them are same. So DNA you have A, G, C, and T. RNA, A, G, C, and U. So what's the difference? Instead of you have a thymine, I have a uresol. So what's a thymine structure? This is what we talked about already. Six carbon, carbonyl group right here, you have NH, you have NH, so you have H, you have CH3, so you go like this. Okay. So, what is difference? This is thymine. And uresol is very similar. So this is uresol. Still six carbon, no problem about it. You have O, carbonyl group. You have NH right here. You have NH right here. You have H, double bonds. What's the difference? It's carbon number six. Carbon number six. Instead of I have a methyl group, I have a proton. So this is, we just say, a H replace a methyl group at an unimportant position. So that's a major difference of the structure, but it looks very similar. Okay? So that's the third one. The second, uh, the second one. Third one, what's the difference? So we talk about DNA. Verse RNA, the second one. DNA, most of the time, is double strand. And RNA is single strand, most of the time. So the last one DNA replication, there is. Arrow fixing system. And I get transcription. There is no this system. And you know that if there is a one gene base made a mistake, the mutation will happen, finally could causing genetic disease. The reason is transcription, you cannot fix it. Okay, so that's very uh, obvious. Now we want to go back to talk about the RNA. What is the RNA? Uh, what are the RNA we're going to talk about? There are the three different types of the RNA, if you want to talk. What are those three? First one, mRNA. This is called message. RNA. Message RNA is carrying the genetic code we call the coda. 
It's three letters. Okay, we have that. Okay, the second one is all oing. So what is all oing? The all represents ribosome. So that's ribosome oing. That is ribosome part of the structure. And we also know that basically you have 36 subunits, 16S or RNA. We'll mention real quick. And the 50S subunits, you have 23S or RNA. So they all pay much attention, play an important role in the translation process, but they're part of the ribosome structure. So that's RNA. Okay, what is TRNA? That's transfer RNA. And transfer RNA, you need to remember this guy always carrying yes, anti-codon. This is the key. So now let's move on to the talk about what is TRNA looks like. So what are the TRNA looks like? TRNA is very special. This is what TRNA looks like. That's five prime. This is three prime. They are, looks like what, what it looks like. It looks like we call it a clover leaf. Structure. So the important part, obviously, is here. This is called anti-codon on. And on here, you're going to carry your amino acids. So this is called amino acid except. On. Okay, what are these called? You have like a D arm right here. And you have a T theta C arm. And this guy is variable arm. And it is very interesting in T arm, eh? We have A, U, G, C, but we also see there is some of a very weird, it's like a P, Y, P, U, and even P, G, these are very weird gene-based showdown. So if you have a question, that's always asked you in the genetic class, how do you know it is T on it, if I make messed it up? When we do the gene-based analysis, when you see what sample has this weird, uncommon gene base? So most likely it is a TI. Okay, so that's what it looks like the TI. Before we uh, talk about anything, we wanted to give you the uh, the opening remarks. You can say what it looks like. So this is uh, um, the transcription. Before we talk about, it, we need to talk about this information. Okay, the next one. The next one, we're going to talk in a little bit detail about the transcription. But transcription itself, compared to uh, replication, relatively it's not that hard to understand. Uh, a little bit difference between bacteria and yeast, which means different from what I learned, what you learn here, compared to genetic class. Uh, but majority of them are similar. So, RNA transcription. The RNA transcription is very similar to DNA replication. It's also a polymerization process. So, we have an enzyme called RNA polymerase. And the RNA polymerase is created, is founded by Roger Kornenberg, which is also Kornenberg's son. And he got a Nobel Prize in 1994, which is the first final structure. 
and uh, the INA polymerase, the transcription direction is always 5 prime to 3 prime. This is, you already know, it's same as replication. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the INA uh, polymerase, what it looks like. So adding a polymerase, it is a hollow enzyme. So we talk about the hollow enzyme. There is coenzyme and cofactor. So one of the components of the coenzyme of adding a polymerase, it is alpha two, two alpha subunit, a beta. Beta prime and omega. So the core enzyme, there is a five subunits. And what are the cofactor for majority of the bacteria to survive in the uh, common life, normal life? It's sigma 70. What does 70 mean? This means 70,000. DA, delta, which is a weight measurement for protein, because the enzyme is a protein. So this is a hollow en enzyme. Okay, now, how the RNA polymerase could start to working? We have the procedure we want to talk. This is something we want to mention is, what we want to teach you here is sigma 70. It's the most commonly recognized the cofactor. But in the real life, when the bacteria's environment changed, they are using different cofactor. So you can see here you have sigma 32. It's a heat shock response, which means bacteria, if they injured with heat, if you're cooking, they injured, then their transcription. They are not using sigma 70, they all have a sigma 32. And we, when we talk about the flagella motility, chemotaxis, it's not sigma 70, it's sigma 28. Now, why it is important? Because every different sigma factor, they have a conservative sequence, which is, can be recognized, and we call promoter. So. For transcription, we were very careful going to talk about is the initiation. So, this is what is going to happen. We have a two DNA, double strand. Okay? So let's say we have from five prime to three prime. And three prime to five prime. And there's a start in the place to do the transcription. We add a plus one. And the right side, which means this side, it's called downstream. And the left side, this is called upper stream. Now, the RNA polymerase, they started to do the polymerization. They need to recognize some of the conservative sequence. So what are they? First of all, about 10 base down string the plus one initiation position. There is a conservative sequence called TA, TA, AT. So we could do a complementary. That's AT, AT, uh, that's AT, AT, TA. That is called minus 10. We also give them the, the name called Bribonal Box. There is another conservative sequence, which is around 32 to 35. Downstream called TTGACA. So complementary here will be AA, 
C T G T. So here is minus thirty five. Where is the promoter? This area is promoter. This promoter has to be recognized by oiling a polymerase. How they recognize it? Sigma factor. They go to find it. And then the oiling a polymerase will be attached. This is the oiling a polymerase. And they start to do polymerization. Five prime to three prime. So here we want to also mention that all the polymerase have an important role during polymerization. Three major functions. Number one is unwind. DNA double helixy. You need to separate it. Number two, read the frame. This frame means the sequence. Okay? Number three, synthesize of M oing. These are three major functions for oing polymerase. Okay, let's do a very quick practice. Okay, this is the DNA. I have five prime to three prime. Another band is three prime to five prime. If I have A, T, G, C, T, A, G, C, what is this DNA band looks like? This you know, T, A, C, G, A, T, C, G. Okay, what going to be the RNA sequence looks like? M RNA. It's going to go this direction because it's 5 prime to 3 prime. What is the sequence? The sequence should be exactly the same as the top one. The only difference is U replace T. So, A, U, G, C. U, A, G, C. Therefore, we always call the top one is sensor band. And the bottom one is template band or we say coding band okay that's very easy to understand how we do it uh, but don't forget that's five prime to three prime okay uh, this is the one which is showing you the procedure how they do it during this process, they will obviously have a bubble, which is RNA DNA hybrid, will be formed. Okay, the transcription bubble will be produced. Then they go ahead to do the transcription. And I know that in your, in your class, which is we talk about uh, specifically, this is in E. coli. And when you talk about East and the modes, this is going to be different. They're called a TATA box. It's a different one in the Eastern modes, okay? How do you know their termination? Their termination, there is a couple of uh, signals will tell you to terminate. Number one, if you see row factor, the transcription start. Number two, 
they could generate a steam loop area. This steam loop area is also very funny. It has lots of U. So we call it a rich U steam loop area. That means the transcription will be stopped. So this is a picture which is showing about that. Okay. So that's what we talk about transcription. And this is a transcription, a whole picture. Okay, we have a promoter at being a double bound. You have eyeing a polymerase. The sigma factor will be recognized that. And the breakdown, which is unwinged, then based on gene complementary policies, they have MIMA will be generated. But the only difference is you replace uracil, replace cyme. And then the long become longer and longer, it's called five prime to three prime. And then when they find a terminator, either a rich U area or it is a row factor, they will be stopped to do the transcription. And they give you the sequencing. Okay, and they will be released. Now for transcription, the very important slide is this one, is the initiation. You should mark this one is three star. Why this is important? Because this is, tells you the information about the promoter, a conservative sequence, <coughs> recognized by sigma 70. We have TATAT minus 10 sequence. What it means minus 10 means it is a 10 base pair, approximately 10 base pair downstream, uh, upstream, okay, compared to the plus one area. And then you have a minus 35 sequence, which means they are downstream, uh, sorry, they're upstream about 35 base pair, they have TTGACA. And minus 10 and minus 35 combine this area called a promoter. And the promoter is recognized by the RNA polymerase. And with the help of sigma factor. So that's the key thing for the transcription okay so we finish talk about here then we move on to translation the last step there are a lot we could talk about the translation translation obviously we need a TI in it so we're gonna move the whole thing uh, there are a lot of them we can talk So we're going to remove this whole thing, the whole bench, the whole blackboard. We're going to explain to you what happened. So we have is RNA translation. So first the two very simple concept. Where is the location happened for translation? Ribosome. So that's the reason ribosome. Bacteria, eastern modes they both have. It's very interesting. That's very few couple of the, uh, cellular organs, both of them they have. Same to Replication, transcription, the translation of the direction is also 5 point to 3 point. Okay? This is the first slide which is tells you the whole thing what we talk about. So, coding strand, the temporary strand, the 5 prime to 3 prime, 3 prime to 5 prime, anti parallel, then so generates the mRNA. And then you have a tRNA which is corresponding to the mRNA, then become an uh, anti -carbon. So we want to talk a little bit about the codon. The codon system, what it looks like, how it works. So here we're using three letter system. What are they? A, U, C, G, it could be. Because this is the MR. 
So everything we have a three box. This comes out a very simple math question. Theoretically, if I have four possible gene base A, E, C, G, I have a three box position. Number one, number two, number three. How many possible combination will be generated? It's a very simple mess. How many possible could be in the box number one? It's four. How many possible in the possibility? The number in the box two is also four. How many possibility in the number uh, number two, number three is also four. So we multiply by them. 4 multiplied by 4 equals 16. 16 multiplied by 4 equals 64. So theoretically, we have 64. However, we only have 61. We know about that. Could be represent 20 amino acids. Now, where do the 3 go? The 3 all we call UAG. UGA and UAA, it is called stop coded. And we call it a nonsense coded. Okay? So this is the first thing you need to know. Second, we have 20 amino acids. 61 codon can represent that. Which obviously means one amino acid could be represented by multiple code. Okay. Then what's going to happen? Position one, position two, and position three. During the evolution of the genetics information, it's very smart. The so loose set, they gave me flexibility. This is like someone didn't do very good exam. You come out to me, I'll give you something to do to make up your uh, extra points. For bacteria, they also give them a flexibility. You have three positions, number one, number two, number three. They are very strict. The so position number one. They are very strict for the position number two, but they give you flexibility of number three. This is called wobble effects. So, I gave you an example and you can look at that. U, U, U and U, U, C they all represent phenylalanine. The position is number three. And you can also hear G, U, U GUC, it all represents violin. It's all happened is the position number three. So in other words, it is very important for bacteria in their short lifetime. In case if they made a mistake, which means a mutation they generate, if it happened in the position number three, sometimes it doesn't matter. The transcription can continue, and the translation will still be the same because the protein amino acids will be the same. That is called silent mutation. And this whole thing called redundancy. And we also call it regeneracy. Okay, it's a very smart, it's a very smart system, very clever system to make sure it works. Okay, so this is uh, three code, letter code you learn in your other classes, and we don't ask you to remember it. And uh, I will be um, to give you the table if needed in the exam. By the way, you should know A U G represents methionine. That is always the first code to be translated. Okay, this is something we want to talk.
Okay, so we're going to move this part. Then we continue to talk about translation. Okay, translation. How they do? They're going to focus on a one structure, one chemical. Let's talk about wobble, okay? The structure of, of TRNA. I already talked about the TRNA, what it looks like. You see the T, C, T, C arm, variable arm, anticodon arm, D arm. You already see it. And amino acid uh, accept arm. So this is what happened when they start. How they start. It's very simple to start. You need amino acids. You need a TRNA. That's no question about it. Okay? They will be connected. <coughs> this process obviously need ATP. Need magnesium. They will generate TRNA. And it's pretty expensive. So what you happen to finally you see, it is actually is monophosphate, adenine monophosphates, and the two phosphates will be generated. Okay, what's the structure looks like? This is I always like for what, what it looks like. We can draw it. Okay. We can always draw a ribose. This is a base. H O H H O H. I'll draw here. H C H two. So you go up. We have out. Go here. Okay. O phosphate. 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 Where the TRNA goes, they goes to here. And you can see very, very easily, they goes to here. They connect with 5' to 6'. This three point position, this is anti codon, okay? Anti codon. And this is TRNA. They connected to that. So, TRNA, three prime position, connected with a phosphate. So, where the amino acids go? Right here. You have hydroxy bonds. What is the amino acid? Have? That's amino acid, is that right? Uh, wait a second, this is wrong. You have C right in the middle. This will be H, NH2. What are the here? C, H. What happened? Lose one molecule of water, they will connect. How they connect it? That's high energy bound. That's what the picture looks like. You lose more molecule of the water, and this is amino acids. This is side chain represents 20 amino acids. So this is what the TRNA, when they carry on, an amino acid looks like. And this process, obviously, you need an enzyme. What's the enzyme? TRNA amino acid Transferase. That's the enzyme. Or synthesis. Sorry, synthesis. I made a mistake. 
Healing the amino acid synthesis. They need the enzyme for it. Okay, that's the initial. And this is tells you healing a carrier anticodon. Okay, it is also very interesting. Now let's move on to talk about uh, how that happens. The translation. Where the location of the translation? Is ribosome. So I'm going to draw here, okay? Ribosome, what it looks like? A large one and a smaller one. The large subunits for bacteria is 50s, small is 30s. And we mentioned about 30s, 16s or NA, and 50s. You have 23S or ONA. This all S is a Vandenberg unit. Is that right? That's why they end up is not 80S, it's 70S. That's what we talk about. That's a ribosome. Okay, how they started? When they initiate the 30S subunits is attached with something. Initiate factor one. Okay, they attach there. They need to make sure it's nothing happened. Okay. Uh, sorry, it's attached with uh, initiate factor three. They are separate. Once you start to do the translation, we have initiator factor one comes, they will kick this off, attached to here. At that moment, we will tell you it is ready to do the translation. And then what happened? This TRNA gonna come in. So TRNA coming, they're gonna carry something. And they are not come by it individually. They come, there is a holder, which is the initial factor two. And once they come in, what they need? Of course you need to pay something, is that right? Is that like you go any places, watch a football game, watch a movie, you only need to pay something. So they need to hydrolyze. GTP become GDP. And then they come in. <clears throat> now, okay, and then moving. Now always remember, it is very interesting. We talk about this guy. We talk about the TRNA carry or something. The first amino acids carrier is always methionine. But there is a little bit of difference. In UK youths and eastern modes, it is methionine TRNA. In bacteria, is M formula methionine. It's a little bit different. This is methionine. Okay, and you have NH2, you have H, you have C. What's the difference? This gum that's formula. What's the difference here? You're gonna carry on something, which is this this guy is down E I A and T. What is this Messiah? This is Messiah. Methionine is at the sulfide there. That is the first one happens in bacteria. So it's called a formula methionine TRNA. It's a bacterial initiator as the first one. Okay, always remember it's very special. So what will happen? 30 subunits right here. 
It does not mean every sin you're going to accept it. Okay, 0 is a minus sequence going to go in. Does not mean every isolated band coming. I said I'm going to start to do something. No. They have to do something which is relatively special. They need to have a very conservative gene we call AGG, AGG. It's called SD sequence. Shine the Gano sequence. The Shine the Gano sequence will be recognized by 16A RNA inside of the 30th subunits. Then they can start to do the translation. So they must have AGG, AGG at the MRNA. Okay? So how do you do it? We talk about the initiation, then we want to talk about the, the um, elongation. On the serious subunits, there are three positions. Which is very interesting called EPA. That's three position. What that means? E exit side. This is a free, a free finery. What looks like it doesn't carry anything. A TRNA is released from there. What's a P means? Peptidal, peptidal site. What happens is trans peptidation. Now, what is A means? Amino acyl binding site. Okay, so what it looks like? Uh, this we need to draw right here. Okay, we're going to draw all up. Okay. You have an mRNA coming. The mRNA has AGG, AGG. Recognize the 16 sRNA of the 30 subunits. Okay, this is what we already talked about. In the issue factor, uh, one, three, two, then they do. Once they see AGG, AGG, that 50 S subunits will cover. At the same time, they will activate elongation factor 1, 2, and 3. Also need a hydrolyzed GTP become GDP, release phosphates. This is very clear. So how are they moving? Where do they do? This is going to be drawn in the picture for you. Okay, so the first one we draw like this. Three position. This is E, P, A. We have a big cover there. What are they looks like? If I have, let's just draw it like this. This is M, E, T, the first one. Okay, in the A position, I'm going to have a second one coming, which is AA amino acid number one. What will be move, moving? They're moving this direction. So, what it looks like the second step? Same thing, we try it. E, P, A. What it looks like? This goes here. Finally, will release. And then you go here, where you will find yes, AA1, MET is right here at the back. Then the same position, another guy gonna come in. Is AA2. So they move this way. Okay, the next one, what it looks like. 
Sonius, 50s, you have E, you have P, you have A. What's going to happen? This is already gone, okay? Right here, they're going to find another amino acid to carry on. And this one moves to here. Then this guy becomes longer and longer, is AA2, AA1, and the first one is always MEK. This direction is 5 prime to 3 prime. That's why the translation called 5 prime to 3 prime. And then you have a new one coming. Is AA3. They also move this way. And this is 30th subunits, this is 50th subunits. Now, how they do here? They rely on 23 srna they have the important enzyme called transpeptidase. Okay, that's a procedure how we run it. Now, we like chemistry. I always like to talk about chemistry. What is the really the reaction happens? This is just a cartoon movie. Okay, what is the structure looks like? I like to talk about that. The chemistry. So I skip the E side. Okay, I'm gonna, only going to write the P and the A side. So what it looks like. So we're going to go back to the block of the structure. Okay, go here. Have a base, let's just say A. Okay, H, H, O, H, H, O, H, C, H2. So what you have? Phosphate O, a phosphate, a phosphate. This will be connected with a beautiful stuff here, which is a TIN A. This is five prime. This is three prime. This is TIN A. So where's the amino acid go? Come here. C. Then go to here. C. Let's say the first one is M E T. Uh, the first one is M E T. Okay. Then H N H two. Okay. Then we have something more there. Okay. So we take this one out. We draw all one. Let's just say S E H go here. You have C H, you go to C H, this is M E T, and this is N H 2. Remember, this is a peptide chain. This is, we call it a peptide bond. Is that right in your chemistry? Okay, in the A side, I'm going to count in some, something. I'm just draw a little bit simple. It's still A, H, H, O, H, H, O. Okay, this side, I'll just write CH2 with a phosphate with a TRN. Okay, it's the same thing here. Same thing like here. This here comes is C, O, C. Let's say we have an R2, and this is H and NH2. How they do? This guy is attacking here. Okay, they're gonna insert there. So what it becomes? This becomes A H O H H O. This is H C H two. This side is the same phosphate. <clears throat> Here you gotta see something which will be C O C R2 H N H. Then you go here, C um, you, you go here will be O uh, sorry. NH you will have a uh, uh, sorry C 
carbonyl group C R1, and then go H, then NH, and then go here will be double bond C H N H that's M E T. Okay? That's how you do it. Now there's a little bit of under misunderstanding. When we draw here, you may confuse it. When we move around, so because we only have the uh, 2D uh, version, we don't have 3D. So this happens when you draw here. You have to understand it's upside down. When you do the upside down, do you understand it, what it looks like? Okay? When we draw the picture here, it goes this way. When you insert, you can understand it is upside down. That's the tricky thing to understand this picture. Why it is, it is different. So you always remember, the last one, MET, is always at the end, and everything is insert. Once they insert, this guy is free. So they move to the E, and then they release, and this guy moves this way. Okay, then a new one comes in. So the chain becomes long and long, goes this direction. And here, can you see that? What's the difference? That's why I said, when we draw the structure, you need to understand it, it's upside down. Okay, th that is uh, the tricky thing there. Okay, termination, everybody knows. You have the nonsense stop coding, UAA, UAG, and the UGA, then you start it, and then finally you're releasing, release factors, okay? Um, three release factors in Procare, it's only one release factor in the UK, it's, we're not gonna talk about that. Uh, the whole translation process, they are hydrolyzed is GTP. That's their energy currency. If you don't know anything, this is a cartoon movie picture there. You can understand it very well, the whole procedure about the translation, how it happens. Uh, because of the time limitation, um, this whole uh, lacto operant, we will talk about uh, uh, after election day will be next week Thursday. Okay, then we have a review, we're gonna do exam three. Okay.